In section 13.6, we are exploring the directional derivative and the gradient. So before we begin, I want you to recall that the partial derivatives of a function tell us the rate of change of the function on its domain in specific directions. Now, knowing the slope in the x and y directions allows us to find the slope of a surface in any direction. And this is the story behind the directional derivative. Now, before we can define the directional derivative, we need to learn about the del operator and the gradient. So get excited, here we go. So first things first, what is the del operator? So the del operator is used to help us define the gradient. And we denote this as del, so that's our nabla symbol. And we define the del operator as d dx i hat plus d dy j hat plus d dz k hat. Or alternatively, we can put this into the component form and say that this is d dx d dy d dz. So this is the del operator or the nabla symbol. Now, Caution young Padawans, this del operator is not really a vector. So this object, the nabla symbol, our del operator, is not really a vector. So it's important to note that the del operator is in fact an operation that's applied to either a function or a vector field. Now here, when the del operator is applied to a scalar valued function, we attain the gradient. So when del, the del operator, is applied to a scalar valued function, So a scalar valued function f, we attain the gradient. Now the gradient is thus defined as del f. So now that we have defined the del operator and emphasized that del is an operation, a vector operation applied to a function or a vector field, we can go ahead now and look at the formal definition for the gradient. So here we go. So here we go, the gradient vector, del f. So the vector containing the partial derivatives of a scalar valued function f is called the gradient. So here we are looking at the formal definitions for both the gradient in R2, or in the plane, as well as the gradient in space, or in R3. So looking at the definition of the gradient in two dimensions, here we want to let f be differentiable at some ordered pair x, y. So the gradient of f at this point is the vector valued function defined as follows. So we have del f at the ordered pair x, y is defined in component form as the partial derivative of the function with respect to x at the point x, y, and the partial derivative of the function with respect to y at the point x, y. And of course, we could write this alternatively using our standard unit vectors and say that that's the partial derivative of the function with respect to x at the point x, y, i hat, plus the partial derivative of the function with respect to y at the point x, y, j hat. So this is the definition and the vector for the gradient in two dimensions or in the plane. Now, the definition for the gradient vector in three dimensions 
is a natural extension of R2, we simply need to add the Z component. So again, we're going to let F be differentiable at some ordered triplet X, Y, Z. So the gradient of the function at this point is the vector valued function defined again as del F, but this time it's of an ordered triplet, x, y, z. So in component form, we have three components, the partial derivative of the function with respect to x at the ordered triplet, x, y, z. We have the partial derivative of the function with respect to y at the ordered triplet, x, y, z. And we have the partial derivative of the function with respect to z at the point x, y, z. And again, in addition to this, we could use our standard unit vector form and write the gradient vector in space as the partial derivative f sub x at the ordered triplet x, y, z, i hat plus the partial derivative of the function with respect to y at the ordered triplet x, y, z, j hat, plus the partial derivative of the function with respect to z at the point x, y, z, k hat. So we now have our two gradient vector formulas. We have the gradient vector in R2 and the gradient vector in R3. So let's go ahead now and look at some examples of computing the gradient for a scalar-valued function.